I would, you know, they don't like emails because it clogs their email system, but you could say, I didn't write you about this, this is what I wrote you about, I'd, I'd appreciate a different uh, reply. You just can't make people angry with you. That's all I can tell you, because you don't like to be challenged, do you, Cindy? No. No, no. 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 So I was playing the really bad person. In both, in both cases, though, it was with personal contact with a representative. Well, then I can't not tell the, you. Not the elected representative, they're, they're, staff, they're members. staff members. That's tough. Yeah, I don't know. They have more than one staff person. <laughs> Somebody back there had a question. What about speaking to the press? How do, how do legislators um, respond if you go directly to the press and talk to Not my area of expertise. I, I just... I was, doing my, I was doing advocacy for parents of kids in special ed in Colorado, and I took issue with what a reporter said, and all I can tell you is they got more time and more money and they can make you look really stupid. Yes. So you have to know who you're talking to, and it's better to go with the group than one. Yes, Thank talking you. points for that reason. Yeah. And, and written correspondence. But you know, you, you don't win a fight with the press, I learned that the real hard way. Yeah. I know that what we all do is very uh, emotional. We're dealing with people who have these needs and the providers and people aren't getting paid and, and, and it's life or death in lots of situations and it's scary and our, our emotions can get really fired up. But um, my boss uh, told me a great thing one time, never send an email or make a public statement or do anything that you wouldn't want on the cover of the New York yeah. Times the next day yeah. being picked apart by the entire press on CNN and Fox for the next day. So you just got to take time to put it in a really good framed professional way and it's going to be much more effective and sandwich it with a good thing and then the bad thing in the middle and a good thing at the end. Well, I'll tell you, it's almost like I can cry on demand when I start talking about my daughter. The tears just come and I can't stop it. And I don't know who said it from the front this morning. Might have been... Um, Deborah, that the professionals come in, the state staff come in, they give statistics. We have the human story, so it's not good to be angry or yell at them, but let your emotions come through if you can control them. Yeah. And somebody here. Yeah, uh, the press is just one form of media, and I often play with the idea of what would happen if we got together and started talking to the people that produce television shows and have make movies and they have websites and they're, they're open to comment and, and get a better presentation and representation of uh, disabled and care providers and, and, and our community on their programming, right embedded in their shows. And, and I think perhaps that's one way of being political without being political because people that want to get elected want to support what looks good and what looks good on TV and what looks good in uh, other uh, media forms like uh, uh, movies and things. Um, it's, hard to, it's hard to buck that. No one kicks Mother Teresa in the shins. I mean, you know, uh, that would be a disaster. But you remember how cute Michael J. Fox was when he was first on television? Yeah. And do you see him now? Beautiful. He's, yeah, and so that station keeps some of us watching because we love Michael J. Fox. You know what I'm talking about, The Good Wife? So we can support that. Yeah, and, and, and let the producers know how much we appreciate that. Yeah. I know there are other examples, I just can't call them to mind. You want me to shut up, Janie? I'm sorry? As much as you want to say, one more minute, or whatever. Oh, one more minute. So come on, more questions. Did you get excited? Did you think you could do better than Gertrude Berry? Tell me the truth. Did you think you could be better than Gertrude Taylor? No, I didn't. Okay. So what are uh, the rules are up there? It's always best to make an appointment. It's always best to introduce yourself when you come in. It's always best to leave written material, particularly your contact information. Be courteous. Yes, ma'am. Just one more. Standing alone is not enough. We are all from California. As a group, then let's have our voice. Sika, Kappa, whatever we have, let's do it. Because just my county cannot do it. Almeda did it, 12.50. We are only 11.50. Why don't we all, the county of California, push for it? Well, I think that's the goal of Sika, isn't it, Charlie? Yeah. Isn't that the goal? And tomorrow is the Americans, 
the DCAD rally, and they're going to have, I'm showing you the program brochure now. This is the program for tomorrow, and the issues that DCAD is pushing are in here, and then there are other handouts on the table. So, so the, other thing, the other thing is, too, is if you're doing a drop-in visit, usually when we, when we don't have a scheduled appointment, because for one reason or another, I have all scheduled appointments, but when you drop-in visit, it's very interesting. Because sometimes the first thing you'll do is you'll go to the door and say, we don't have an appointment, but we would like to talk to somebody. Ask for their health policy person, since this is a health policy issue. And if you can't get that, find somebody who's doing social service. And then, and then and, yeah, you'll get whoever you get. Sometimes you get the guy at the desk, and, you, and not necessarily do you get to meet in the office. Sometimes if they're like six or seven or eight of you, we had a meeting in a hallway yesterday. Exactly. And so it's just as effective. It's a little noisy, but it's just as effective. Speak loud, clear, and you can either do it one or two ways. When we do lobbying, we usually meet 10 minutes outside the door so everybody knows what they're going to say. And then when they meet 10 minutes outside the door, you can decide whether you're each going to take an issue or you're going to use it. Okay, if you want special con like consultation with Randy, that's Randy Hicks in the corner. He knows what he's talking about. Uh, wait, Randy. I'm the, I get the last word, Randy. I get the last word. So the rule is wake up, get up, dress up, show up, speak up. Okay, let me I think William and Cindy are on, huh? William and Cindy is on. Extras, just leave right here. Hmm? If you get any extras, just leave them right here. We'll take them. You're going to pass them back there? Hey. Oh, no, no. Well, I hope everyone has gotten a lot of useful good information. Um, again, certainly thanks for coming. And certainly thank you for coming. Um, it's been a real cool day. Um, as we went over, you know, we Elvin taught us a lot about the history, the difficulties that we faced when we first started, the challenges. And when people said we couldn't do it or it wouldn't happen, we made it happen by getting involved and doing something about it. Um, Deborah came forth and she talked to us about the pollution efforts, how wonderful it is and how impressive it is for the legislators as we get the uh, stakeholders together and combine the forces of our coalition to become better and have a larger and bigger voice. Charles came forth and told us about what we can do as a public authority, and how we can make our public authority more effective by what we do. Um, and they all came forth and told us about the legislative process and how that works. And Fran gave us a good overview on how to meet those legislators and how to impress them with our cause. But right now we'd like to figure out where do we go from here as an advisory board and what do we take from here. So I'd like to get your input. First, uh, let me go back and ask you, do we meet your expectations? You're referring to SICA, correct? Right? Yes, the summit. Do we meet your expectations here? Yes. yes. Do you have any anything you feel we should add, or would you like any more information on the main topic? Okay. Um, uh, or, yes. Is it possible that in future times we might talk about different relationships, like different counties have different setups and relationships between their advisory and their and their governing board and their public authority. And they're not all like Alameda, but if we could maybe talk about the nuances of those and how they might work. Are you asking for examples of uh, how other counties operate and relationship between their advisor boards? <coughs> right, because it sounded like 
in Alameda County, the public, it was the public authorities uh, advisory committee, like it belonged to them. It, it just seemed very, like it works for them and that's wonderful and I really applaud you for, for promoting this, adding the four uh, ISS advisory committee members to the um, uh, interview process. You, I, I think that's wonderful. Okay, but, but give me something to work with here. Give me a phrase we can put up. Uh, differences between the, and then. Uh, different a variety of relationships because it sounds like whatever works for your county is what you do. Is that right? Yes, apparently. I don't know. Or Maybe it's got to be different advisory board models. And, and put different counties, different models, 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 models. models. Okay. internal political structures between yeah. PAs, board of supervisors, and advisory committees. Yeah, like does it all have to be one size fits all? Um, I think the problem is it is a one size fits all. Every county is different. Question over here. Yes, I would like to see some discussion on what, how the effect of managed care is on IHSS. Effects of managed care. And CCI. Including, including wait, 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 CCI. Wait, wait, wait. I want to get his, his okay. You keep coming. The effects okay, of, it. Okay. All right. Yes. And so let's include that with the coordinated care initiative as it moves forward to the counties. Since we know that the governor has decided to give about $125 million to push this forward, as Janie knows, she's been on the calls, and also, and what we're going to do about that is it comes to Sacramento County or any county to make sure that the uh, persons with disabilities are covered. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I love this uh, paper, the role of advisory committee. This is excellent. However, because some of our members in the advisory committee are only Spanish speaking, I wish, I don't know how much it will cost to have this excellent paper be translated to Spanish. Translated to other languages. Um, amazing. Yes. Cindy? Any other comments? Put, put parentheses blind. Because that those are a couple of things that have been brought up to me before. So Sandy and Charlie? I was just asking Sandy to add the word blind. Because okay. translation and blindness have been okay. brought up to me a couple of times. Sir, we we also need to have an access summary. Since there's been a lot of bills introduced in the legislature, not only two fifty one by Christine Olson or by Roth and which is on the DCAT list and other access bills, what's happening now is they decided that um, we really can't sue for access anymore so they can put access off forever. Like we had a great bill, 622 was going to put adult changing stations in bathrooms. It, the intent was great, but when we got down to the code language, they put in a, a right to cure. A right to cure means they can take as long as they need to, to put those accessible bathrooms in. So. Number that would be right to cure. We need to end the right to cure so that way the small businesses or any other business who doesn't want to be accessible can just say we don't have to be accessible and they can push it out as far as they like 30 days, 60 days, 120 days, whatever they want. So we need to fix the right to cure. Okay, and so I also noted you guys would like more bill information, not just on access, but yes. more overall. Okay. Yep, and right the right to, to and, and to educate the people on the right to cure. Okay. Okay, now the next question is where do we go from here? Okay. Where do we go from here? Secret room. <laughs> What do we have to do? One of some of the things we mentioned today is we need to know how our public authorities work better and how we can maximize the effectiveness of our public authorities. So any suggestions on that? Where do we go from here? When you say we need to know how our public mm -hmm. authorities work better, are you lumping the advisory committees in with them? I think we need yes. to know the other. Yes. Okay, because I'm wondering, are some of them separate? Yeah. That's what I'm wondering. You're wondering what? 
are we, how do our public authorities work better? And how do our advisory committees work better? Well, well, and can we blend them in some way? It should work hand in hand. I know they should. In some cases, they should. I know they should. I, how do we heal? Here's the thing. We want to know what the next step is. I know. Okay. So where do we go from here and what we have to do to make that happen? Thank you. <laughs> Ladies. Um, I'd, I'd like to find better communication methods with IHSS clients. Great as we are, we are a terribly small group compared to the size of the IHSS clients or, or consumers in this state. So how can we find a better way of reaching them? Would that be like improved communication between IHSS recipients and the state or IHSS recipients and your county? Neither. With each other. With each other. Okay. Yeah. And with Zika. Well, my question would be, how do we get the word out better to our monthly calls? How do we increase the participation? Everybody put it on their agendas. Put it, put it on our agenda, yes. But we also have to spread the word. So well, how do we get up the more agendas people? and the public notices, that's what you would get. Say it one more time. Through your agenda, it's supposed to be publicized for three days before the meeting. So that would open it up to the public. Most consumers don't ever see those, so that's the problem. Well, I to the community. Pardon? And go out to the community and talk to the and talk to the community people. Okay. Uh, what about the way they send the invitation for this uh, summit to the uh, public authority whatever, throughout the county, uh, so that the committee will be able to get uh, the information to be able to join. Okay. Sitting out like this. I would say if you don't have a, a county newsletter that goes to consumers and providers to create one and to involve as many consumers and providers into submitting articles or information to that newsletter and that's one way to um, involve people, then you can start giving them the most important information, whatever it is. Um, the content. How many people here, by the raise of hands, have been on our website? Okay, that's about 40%. I invite everyone here to get on our website. And our Facebook. And our Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Chris. William, I don't know if this is exactly what you're looking for, but I think we just really need to build the network. I'm a great believer in intent. And if we have the intention of building the network, we'll find the ways. And some of them are things like the Brown Act gives us an enormous opportunity to include people on sort of an occasional, they could just come and check it out. But, but they also, according to the Brown Act, have an opportunity to contribute. Now, I violate my three minute allowance over and over again and tell them as much as I can get away with right from the peanut gallery. I don't need an invitation, the Brown Act does it. So that's just one way, but this huge diversity in our group and there's there's thousands of ways. Another way is to talk good about the program. If, if I run into a complainer, I want, to, I want to turn around and say, hey, this is a world-leading program. I'm talking about the IHSS program. Ain't nothing like this hardly anywhere. We're ahead of everybody in the world with this. Now, come on. And politicians and people start to get proud of what they're doing, and then we get support, and then we get funding. Sounds good. I just learned for the first time today that the public authority is supposed to send us all the information. Our public authority manager doesn't send us anything. And I've been on that ISS for over a year. I would Facebook. Yeah. We'll work on that. Any other comments? Um, I think, you know, during the phone calls, it might be a good idea to once in a while to share best practices 
And I, you know, I have to, it's unfortunate that Harry and Pizza wasn't here today because that's one recommendation I would make is if, if possible to get Karen in front of this group at some point. She's yes. a phenomenal individual. She's yeah. awesome to have on those phone calls. But I, I think a lot of people probably join those calls to hear the updates from Karen. And I think that they're tremendously valuable. But I think also, you know, we're doing different things. Charles took over an hour to share a lot of great information, and in some ways those are his best practices. But Charles lives in Alameda. Most of us don't live in that world. And so how do we share the best practices in a more conservative county? Because honestly, I think most of us are you know, kind of fighting for which county is more conservative than the other. And I, I know you know in San Diego it's you know, my boss admits and many others admit it's a conservative county. So how do you create best practices in a conservative county and then share that information during the phone call? Okay. Well, thank you for your input. Well, I can make one request of each person here. Think about what you can do individually to support CFAC what you can do to make us stronger, to make us a better organization. Think of what you can do to encourage us to move forward better, faster. And we may represent all of the providers and consumers in this great state we live in. Think of what you can do to add to our success I would like to see every public authority here have your entire board be on our secret call. I would like to see everyone here to invite someone else to join our secret call. I would like everyone here that if you do not have a vice president in your area, to find one, step forward. I would like to see everyone here to make SICA and support SICA to keep it a great organization as it always has been. I would like to see everyone here to join forces to make SICA a place for consumers and providers to support the IHSS program. 